Hey, Mr. Parker here for a Frantic Friday, which is essentially, uh, I pretty much review whatever I want. And this is uh, a movie called Criminal Lovers. I had actually heard about this. I listened to Killer POV and Elric Kane mentioned it when they were talking about French extremism, French New Wave horror movie type deal being like, I guess, a proto. Not necessarily in that, uh, but just kind of one that started before. It was kind of like an extreme drama type deal. So I uh, tracked it down because it interested me, the subject matter and everything. This is from Australian Releasing Home Video. And uh, it was made, uh, they said the release was 2001. I'm not necessarily sure when it was released. But uh, Criminal Lovers essentially follows the story of that, a pair of criminal lovers who... Uh, <coughs> In the very beginning, uh, the boyfriend kills somebody in a crime of passion, seemingly, and then they go on the run. They get picked up by this hermit in a, you know, a secluded, wooded area trying to get rid of the body. Uh, they make a lot of mistakes on the way. You can tell they're very naive kids, uh, sometimes aggravatingly. Uh, <laughs> As the film progresses, it turns into this sort of a, you know, cautionary Hansel and Gretel fable, fairy tale type deal. But uh, the, it's kind of a role reversal. Uh, it's the more the male oriented. The hermit has a, uh, you know, he's uh, sexually attracted to the boy and uses him as like a house kind of a slave. While the, the woman, uh, the girl is kept uh, below and uh, chained up all the time. <clears throat> And uh, the boy also, the, throughout the film, there's still another storyline going on in the past, and uh, more is uh, brought to light, and uh, it makes it really interesting because you get the insight on these characters, and it's hinted at earlier that some of their sexual, you know, fantasies or, or th stuff like that or manipulation going on behind the scenes, and it's not as it seems, and as you find out more how manipulative one of them can be uh, as it progresses, uh, kind of a Stockholm Syndrome thing even starts to, to happen. Like I said, it's a very typical story, but told in a great way. Uh, uh, it's definitely more complex than it would suggest just by a typical, typical, you know, Hansel and Gretel retelling. It's not necessarily that it gets into a lot of, uh, you know, you know, sexual things and, uh, sexuality and strange, uh, feelings and, uh, lo uh, you know, longings and things like that. Uh, a nightmare sequence for the the female character, uh, brings that forth a little bit and also her diary, uh, and uh, I would say there's a scene in here that you're thinking these people are doing such terrible things. Oh, God, they're driving me nuts. You know, I can't believe they did all this adult crime and all those things like that. But there's a scene where they hit a rabbit on the way to get rid of the body. And uh, the reactions that they give, they stop to bury the rabbit. You can be like, well, after all, these are really just kids and they are naive and things like that. That really set things in motion. Uh, the final act of the film I thought was very bizarre. <laughs> I thought it was almost out of place, and the way it was edited almost made it seem like it was from a completely different movie, almost like it was just uh, part fantasy and, and reality and whatnot, and it brings in like these animals watching a sex scene. I, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a lot of uh, intimate sexual moments that are equally repellent and, uh, you know, like shot in a, like an arousing, like uh, erotic way, uh, a lot of stuff that makes you really uncomfortable, uh, you know, unsettling, uneasy feelings a lot in here. Uh, it's well made, of course. It's well acted. Pretty much only three, maybe four, four main cast members. They all do a great job. But uh, the ending is uh, almost like from a different film, to be honest. But uh, I, I would recommend this one. I think it's very interesting. I think it's a sexually, you know, uh, you know, uh, pretty, pretty wild, pretty, uh, I guess, taboo. I guess you'd say. But uh, just a nice retelling of a story and uh, with the two storylines going on, you know, uh, going back in the past and the more it progresses, you learn more about the characters, which makes it more, much more interesting and you see why character motives and why they're doing it and whatnot. Uh, but regardless, Criminal Lovers is uh, well worth your time. A French film, very different. Just good stuff. Uh, the murders in the movie are very visceral, the murder in the film. Uh, it's, it's not, like I said, the stuff in here is not like the feel-good stuff. It's not, it's definitely told as a, almost a very disturbing uh, matter-of-fact type deal. But uh, this is Criminal Lovers. Uh, there will be information below. Decided just to review this out of my collection. Uh, picked it up recently. But uh, yeah, um, Vibe Killer POV gave that recommendation. It was a, it was a good one that uh, I was uh, really happy to see. Because sometimes I'll see movies and they're not bad. They're not great. It's just there's not much to say about them. I think there's a lot to be said in this film and its style and stuff like that and how it tells its story. Like I said, it's not the story it tells. It's how it tells it and the elements and layers they add into such a simple story that make it so intriguing and different uh but that is criminal lovers and uh thank you very much for watching i'm mr parka
Fais la cour Je t'aime <rire>